I train spots in my quest to get lots of viewers that will only watch about three episodes of this not cast I never see any more after that but I've decided that today it's going to be about trains not purple trains purple trains was the last one this one these are black trains black the coolest color goes with everything and of course the name of Metallica's worst album yeah I know what I'm talking about Saint Anger is better than the black album we are at Battersea Power Station my first ever visit to Battersea Power Station and lo and behold we're going to walk up and have a look at one of my favourite buildings in the world less favourite now because you can't see quite so much of it but those four chimneys of dreams if that's how you want to put it designed by I think is it Sir George Gilbert Scott I think the man of the red telephone box indeed and the man who also designed the Tate Modern and probably the blue telephone box and therefore responsible for Doctor Who this mm -hmm. is um... oh by the way the other voice is my brother you've probably heard him on previous uh, episodes of Mark walks around things Mark bitches about things and Mark answers tedious questions about things this is um a strange building it was derelict for many many years between 1983 and uh, I think roughly 2000 2000 and now I think pretty much 2000 and now, 2000 and now. No, we, did visit it in we did when they were talking about possibly putting a um, uh, an art gallery in there these by the way luxury urban living for gazillionaires um, this area was derelict and abandoned the biggest derelict space in London in fact the biggest the biggest unoccupied derelict space anywhere in Europe inside a city until of course it wasn't and Battersea power station became occupied you will see there the chimneys now these chimneys have been rebuilt these are replicas not the original chimneys the original chimneys had a thing called concrete cancer which meant that they were rotting from the inside and one of the conditions of building these buildings here hello lovely uh, urban flats for luxury urban living oh hello it's Hi. him um, one of the conditions of these was to have these chimneys rebuilt so they were uh, demolished taken down and rebuilt using the original plans with cancer that wouldn't rot or more correctly concrete that wouldn't rot that's because of the listed status because of the listed status <laughs> of the building um, having worked in British property and housing associations and things like that listed status for buildings can be a right pain in the arse and as we all know the easiest way to create gener and generate urban redevelopment is to pay some miscreants to start a fire in the nightclub toilets so you then don't have to worry about the continuing nightclub presence you can just set fire to it and then you can rebuild a bunch of flats over what used to be nightclubs where people fell in love saw nirvana not that i am in any way at all jealous biased or actually just angry about people closing clubs that i no longer go to and haven't gone to for many years as i can testify there is no greater accelerant to fire than a refused planning application the council office is three miles away from the site okay so the last time we visited here that was derelict. The middle of this was derelict. Derelict. And uh, this was um, all empty. This was all wasteland, by the way. Um, dust and bones, to quote the fantastic, but also slightly misanthropic and definitely misogynist Guns and Roses. And I don't know if this building is open for public visitors. I don't believe it is, on the grounds that there's a man there that looks extremely very serious and security guardy indeed. Um, also these are 350 feet tall uh, if you look very carefully inside there you can see that they have definitely constructed something inside the main turbine hall which was open and exposed to the elements for about 30 years I think um, certainly quite terrifying this was a place that until relatively recently you wouldn't have been able to access it publicly um, in fact uh, Graham's not around so I can tell you this although we'll find out when he watches it on YouTube later um, down here down there there used to be uh, a whole bunch of railway arches you probably can't see them now although you can see there the railway station and um, 
or more correctly, the railway line, and there used to be railway arches under there. I wrote a novel in which a character was murdered, and the dead body was buried under there because no one would think to look there. But no, this is Battersea Power Station, and there is a plane. So you can see your dreams come true. The Ian M. Banks book. Uh, come to life. Of course, if you're a fan of Hot Fuzz, you will also know that um, the two policemen that are both played by Bill Bailey, Bill Bailey. Um, are reading books by Ian Banks. And the way you can tell the two apart is not by looking at the hair, but by looking at the book. Because one is reading the books by Ian M. Banks, and the other one is reading the books by THE Ian Banks. And that is how you can tell the difference between the two the first time you watch it, if you're paying attention. So. Battersea Power Station. Woohoo, how exciting. Yes, tourists, weirdos, spods, and nerds. Ooh, what have we got here? We've got a sign. None of this was here. I remember when all of this it was wasteland. Wasteland, wasteland, wasteland. Bars and restaurants, estates, marketing suite. Ah, oh, look, more flats for luxury urban living. Um, if you look particularly closely, by the way, at the side of the building, although I've missed it on, on this, this journey round, you can see where the age of the brick changes because it's slightly darker brick where it's old and slightly brighter, redder brick where it's not quite so old. Because when Battersea Power Station was built way back when, oh God, definitely when I had hair, maybe even before I was born, about, oh, I don't know, 1933 or something like that, um, Battersea Power Station was built only to have one side and so therefore only had two chimneys and then when they realised a few years later that they needed to increase the power capacity inside London and London's en energy generation they effectively built a mirror image of Battersea Power Station on the other side. So, yep, about 1948 I think um, and by the way I should point out I have not Wikipedia this. This is all coming out of my fragile eggshell mind, um, improvising and thinking with my mouth open. So welcome to Battersea Power Station. Let's have a look and see what there is. Hmm. Well, it's a, it's London's most exciting new neighbourhood. Is it? Okay. Brilliant. Thanks. Uh, I think. Um, yeah. Exactly. I mean, obviously, as we have said before, fire and, de and deprivation is a great way to redevelop urban conurbations and transform a vibrant city into a bunch of flats for knackered old men that earn too much money and don't have enough fun. Um, we also have uh, a general store that looks suspiciously like it buys all its shit from Waitrose and charges you the fortune for it. Uh, we have a wine bar called Vagabonds. Good God, it's got very uh, Zoolander, hasn't it? Everyone might just have to go derelict. And um, Ulegi, I think I've got the black lung pop, extraordinary scale. So it's 170 metres long, it's 160 metres wide, it's 350 feet tall. And by the way, about the same size as the Tate Modern, also designed by Sir sure Giles Gilbert Scott, not George and St Paul's Cathedral would comfortably fit within the footprint of the building. If you have been into uh, St Paul's Cathedral, you will know it is tall and big and generally London-y. Very London-y. It's all a bit London-y. In fact, while we're out now, I should point out that we've been outside. It's quite people -y out here. Very people-y indeed. Not sure, actually, how much I enjoy how people-y it actually is. And let's... Let's walk and visit because the last time I was here, which was 2008, I think there was uh, some investment activity that was designed possibly by some um, grand multinational with lots of money that needed to pop up pension funds. And all of this, it wasn't fields, it was shit. Shit and dust. Uh, and there were two huge cranes that were there, right there. They've been obviously removed. And here is Battersea Power Station itself. Um, ye of long memories will know that gigs took place in a tent on this land in 1997. Uh, Morrissey played here, I think Prodigy played here. Madness. Madness might have played here, Madness have played everywhere. I think they've played my house. Um, but there we have it. Instead now we have a little stage. Un stage petit. But we do have uh, chairs for giants. 
Um, so let's have a look and see how big these chairs actually are. Let's hope this isn't like the Star Trek episode where you step on the grass and uh, Wesley, Wesley gets into trouble. Good old Will Wheaton. Um, do you think? No, not even my bum's that big, is it? I'm certainly not going to sit on it because it's extremely very soggy wet indeed. Um, and a coaling jetty. Um, honestly, guys, all you think is you put some quirky coloured chairs on something and there you are. I think it's time for me to stop narrating my visit to a building. It's what a is it? Battersea Power Station. It's just a one. Uh, it's a really big model. It's a 1-1 scale model of a derelict power station that's now been vastly redeveloped and rebuilt. Um, actually, I think, although I suspect my, my camera wouldn't be good enough to, to show you this, um, you could see where they took the side off, around about here, and they built the mirror in 1948. Um, but there you go. Well, I hope that's exciting for you. I'm not sure it's exciting for me. Uh, and obviously, there's some more of London. Um, to quote the, the prophetic Matt Johnson, the cranes are moving on the skyline and the water is dripping from the kitchen trap. Um, what London needs, of course, is more very tall, very large buildings that look like cheap Meccano sets and uh, possibly... Honestly, man, look at that. That looks like someone gave a kid a bunch of grey Lego and said, build the tallest, biggest thing you can do. And he was like, I can do it, Dad. I can do a really big Lego building that's going to look horrible. And it's going to be like a lift. But then people live in it and they pay millions of gazillions of pounds to go and live in there. And you go, oh my God, what is happening? And then I realised I'm an old man yelling at clouds. I used to know what it was. And then they changed what it was. And now what it is is weird and scary. Don't yes. Nobody likes Grand Funk. Oh no, so anyway, Battersea Power Station, one of my favourite buildings in the world. Um, no sign of, uh, I think it's Albert the Pig today. Oh, I think it's Albert the Pig, isn't it? From the Pink Floyd record. No sign of Clive Animals. Owen, Children of Men. No sign of Clive Owen. Although, of course, if you have seen Children of Men, you will know that the restaurant at the end of the universe, or more correctly, at the end of civilization, is on the top there in a ballroom and uh, I love Children of Men. I saw it in the cinema and I was like one of only three people. I felt like I'd seen some kind of version of Velvet Underground on the cinema. And then of course, everyone was going like, God, you like depressing films, don't you? And I'm like, dude, I like depressing everything. I wear black on the outside because it's warm in the summer and it takes longer to get dirty. Um, so there you have it. Battersea Power Station, Battersea Power Station Station. Uh, Battersea Power Station Station is the only station to have station in the name so therefore Battersea Power Station Station is uh, grammatically correct because it is actually the only station that has a station in it and uh, there we go I think I'm going to wrap it up now because if there's nothing the world likes more than um, angry videos about cats and two million viewers watching somebody talking about oh look i found some kind of I've, I've built like a renovated an old gun or something and gets like 20 gazillion viewers or someone's gone i built like a wood shed and 80 million people have watched it for people that have never watched wood sheds instead i'm going to concentrate on shutting the heck up and letting you get on with the rest of your day and today is tuesday 31st of may 2022 good god Yes, good guard and goodbye. Uh, well, we are just pigs on the wings. That's really strange, isn't it? It's going out of focus, even though the station isn't moving. The station is remaining completely still. How bizarre! How bizarre, how bizarre. I think it's time to wrap it up. Of course. Yep, okay. Some cunts recording this.